Welcome. In this video, I show reasons why I overclock my RAM. RAM overclocking is one thing where you can actually get a solid performance improvement from overclocking while saving a bit of money. I have a kit of DDR5 6400XMP RAM, which is paired with the Core Ultra 7 265K. This is a standard UDIM kit, not the new QDIMs, which might be able to clock even higher. DDR5-6400 is what Intel calls stock RAM, and I have seen double-digit performance improvements in several CPU demanding areas by overclocking my RAM kit. In this video, I will show the results from several different configurations, showing the CPU at stock with DDR5-6400 XMP with 200S boost, with DDR5-8000 where I copied timings from a QDIM kit, and finally my DDR5-8133C38 results which can drastically improve performance versus my DDR5-6400 XMP profile. In a previous video, I was running my RAM at an even higher frequency, but I ended up settling on DDR5-8133C38, since I am able to run this with low secondary and tertiary timings, while staying at my memory kit's XMP voltage of 1.4 volts. In IDA64, with the 265K in its stock configuration of DDR5-6400, the memory read speed is at 96 gigabytes per second. The write speed is around 85 gigabytes per second. The copy speed is around 87 gigabytes per second with the latency in the high 80s. Here are the timings my board sets with stock XMP. t refi is quite low and increasing that should be able to improve some of those values by a bit. Enabling 200S boost with the DDR5 6400XMP profile didn't really improve things. The numbers are virtually the same as the stock CPU in this test. Next, I copied timings from a DDR5 8000 QDIM memory kit. Yes, I am using QDIM primary timings on my standard DDR5 6400 memory kit. Setting this in the BIOS is very easy. All I changed were the five primary values. T refi was also increased drastically, but this was done by my BIOS automatically, and it is stable at these values even at the stock XMP voltage of 1.4 volts. This has significantly improved the IDA64 benchmark results. Read speed improves 26% from stock to 121 gigabytes per second. Write improves 28% over stock to 108 gigabytes per second, and copy improves 26% versus stock going to 110 gigabytes per second. Latency was also reduced by around 10 nanoseconds, which is pretty significant. Turning on 200S boost at DDR5-8000 has the read, write, and copy numbers virtually the same, but the latency is further reduced around 5 nanoseconds. That is nearly a 15 nanosecond reduction from the stock results. One thing I'd like to point out is that Tech Power Up RAM reviews get a bit worse IDA64 benchmark scores than my kit, where I just copied the primary timings from a different kit of RAM. I think this is because my board sets T refi to a solid value when I increase the frequency of my RAM. It seems that ASVOG boards may improve some secondary or tertiary timings automatically versus some XMP kits. My DDR5-8000 result gives an extra 6 gigabytes per second read an extra 14 gigabytes per second write and an extra 10 gigabytes per second copy. I am not sure how else this could be explained other than my board giving out better timings when you overclock your RAM. I'm thinking the value that improved the result is T refi. At XMP 6400, T refi was only 6240, but when I copied the five primary timings from a different RAM kit, T refi was increased to 32767, an over 5x increase. Next, I try my overclocked memory settings at DDR5 8133C38 with the CPU still at stock. This sees read improve by about 5 gigabytes per second over DDR5 8000, write improved by about 13 gigabytes per second, and copy improved by about 11 gigabytes per second. That is a very solid increase considering I'm only at 133 megatransfers per second higher than DDR5-8000. Latency with the CPU at stock is reduced by about 3 nanoseconds from the DDR5-8000 results, 
and with 200s boost, the latency of my overclocked RAM is slightly better than the DDR5-8000 result I got from copying a QDM kit's primary timings. Lastly, here is my maximum overclock, which is the same maximum RAM OC combined with my maximum CPU overclock, which improves clocks further than 200s boost. This gives a few additional gigabytes per second write speed and reduces the latency further. In this instance, the latency is under 70 nanoseconds. I would say the low 70s is a good value to shoot for here if you are above DDR5-8000. In the following benchmarks, I will run several configurations to see where the benefits are coming from. And severed still, with the CPU at stock and the memory set to DDR5-6400 XMP, the FPS in a CPU limited area with ray tracing on is 64 FPS. Enabling 200s boost improves the frame rate by 1 FPS. Using the copy DDR5-8000 primary timings, the score increases to 70 FPS, a 9% improvement from stock. Enabling 200s boost doesn't really do anything in this instance, as the FPS stays the same. But since 200s boost allows official support for DDR5-8000, we could still say that 200s boost gave a 9% increase going from stock DDR5-6400 to DDR5-8000. With my DDR5-8133C38 tune settings, the score increases to 72 FPS, a 12% improvement from stock. 200S boost lost a frame in this instance, but it seems to be within the margin of error. With my DDR5-8133C38 setting, along with my maximum CPU overclock, the FPS is 74. Going from 64 to 74, is an over 15% improvement, which is pretty nice. A 15% improvement is a bigger percentage difference than going from an RTX 5070 Ti to an RTX 5080. In this game, the 200S boost DTD and NGU overclock didn't help much, but the RAM overclock allowed for a big improvement. In the Monster Hunter Wilds benchmark, with the stock CPU at DDR5 6400, the average FPS is 121. Turning on 200s boost, the average FPS improves to 123. Adjusting a few timings in the BIOS to get up to DDR5-8000, the average FPS increases to 133.5. That is a nearly 10% increase over the stock result. With 200s boost, the score improved slightly to 134. Next, I tried my tuned DDR5 memory at stock settings. The score ended up at around 136. Enabling 200s boost increased the average FPS to 137. This final result is my final overclock, where I improved DTD, NGU, and ring clocks above 200s boost. This gave an additional 2.3% of performance, lending me at 140 FPS average. Overall, if you look at the stock DDR5-6400 result, in my overclocked DDR5-8133C38 result, there is an over 15% difference, which seems consistent with PC Games hardware finding that an overclocked Core Ultra 7 265K can be drastically improved from a stock 265K. When Hardware and Box recently tested a 265K versus 200S boost, they found only a small difference in performance but their stock CPU results was using DDR5-8200 and their 200S boost results was using DDR5-8000. If they used actual stock speed RAM in their benchmarks, I believe they would have found a much bigger difference than what they ended up finding. 200S boost in my testing can offer around a 10-12% performance improvement over a stock 265K with DDR5-6400 memory. And with my maximum overclock, in two cases, I found a greater than 15% performance improvement comparing my current overclock settings versus the Core Ultra 7 265K at stock with DDR5-6400. A 15% performance improvement is significant and lines up with what you might have expected if you saw the PC Games Hardware 265K overclocking article that I mentioned in several videos. PC Games Hardware also used DDR5-6400 in their stock results for the 200S CPUs 
as they are a website who uses the official specs stated by Intel and AMD. That being DDR5-6400 for 200S CPUs and DDR5-5600 for the 9800X3D. In the end, I'd say overclocking RAM can definitely be worth it. My DDR5 kit uses Hynix MDI, which is known for overclocking well. So if you are planning to overclock DDR5 to similar values, I would recommend you also use a kit with Hynix MDI. RAM prices have gone way up recently. My RAM kit was very cheap compared to what a similar kit is going for today. And I did not have to buy QDEMs to get results that are much better than what you might have seen in some reviews. Today I showed two games which can improve FPS by 15% going from DDR5-6400 up to DDR5-8133-C38 after some overclocking. But I understand overclocking RAM can be very challenging as it takes a lot of time to stability test. But you don't need a lot of tuning to get a solid performance increase for your RAM. You can get most of the additional performance by just using higher speed RAM and maybe increasing T-Refi a bit. Even just changing my 5 primary timings to match a DDR5-8000 kit, I was able to improve performance by around 10% alone in the two games I showed today. If I find more examples, I might post about them separately, but since I have an RTX 5070, it's kind of hard for me to find CPU limited areas in games. If anyone knows of good areas in games to test, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.